used to uh, kind of making fun of this story, right? Martha's kind of the tape, type A person and, you know, busy. And Mary's kind of like the slacker, <laughs> but contemplative. Obviously, there's more, there's more to it than this, right? It says, Martha was distracted with much serving. I know in the other text, it, it, uh, just, it said, burdened with much serving. This translation, she was distracted with much serving. And I'm, it's so wonderful to be around people who are used to hearing, like, Bible stuff. Because I can say this and not get a totally blank stare. <laughs> All right? So this verb is uh, in the middle voice, which in the Greek uh, language, it, it allows for a reading that's reflexive. So another way we could say this is that Martha was distracting herself with much serving. And, and Jesus reveals that later because she, you know, he knows that, that what she's doing is, is a symptom of something. And Jesus, in a, in a few verses, he's going to diagnose it. And then he's going to offer the prescription, the cure. But this distracting herself captures my imagination. How many of you ever heard of uh, the uh, kind of state of life or state of being that a pe person can be in that's described as FOMO, F-O-M-O? -O? Okay. If we are of a different generation, you would probably understand this. <laughs> you may be afflicted by it and you don't even know. It's called fear of missing out. Does that make, you know, it's that you've heard of, right? The fear of missing out. And we see that a lot in, especially in the younger generation, but, but many parents suffer that too. It, it drives a lot of parents to, to get their children into all these different activities because of the fear of missing out. It, it's an existential fear. It's not just a, you know, because it, it's about, like, especially for, for a parent, it's, it's, it's a real fear. It's, it, i got to get my kid to the right school. i got to get him into the right uh, uh, university. Um, they've got to get the right grades. Uh, they've got to have a good resume. And so the kids are pressured into all these things. Why? Because the parents are, are afraid that they'll miss out. It's an existential thing. I, I, a colleague of mine in, in, in Detroit... She works with me on, on catechetics, and she was describing how her daughter is, uh, every time she goes on Facebook, she gets depressed because she sees all her friends living these incredible lives, you know. They're out rock climbing or, uh, or fishing or traveling, or they've just got this uh, amazing new job, or they just, start, you know, engaged in a startup, or they, they found this wonderful new restaurant, and She's just bombarded with all these activities um, of, of all her friends, and she feels like, I, I'm left out somehow. There's something existential going on with, Mary, with Martha. She's distracting herself from something deeper, and she, she expresses it a little more clearly when she says to Jesus, do you not care? that my sister is not helping me. That's a distraction. But there's a question. Do you not care? We're getting deeper into the symptom. The distracting herself is covering something up. It's covering up that existential need. Does my life may have any meaning to it? Does nobody care? Am I valued? for who I am and what I do. It's not that she's just working hard. It's not that she's just petulant and irritated by her lazy sister. There's a cry of the heart. 
And fortunately, she's addressing that cry of the heart to somebody who can understand it and somebody that can do something with it. So Jesus offers the diagnosis. Martha, Martha. And it's interesting, the scripture, that's, it's when Jesus, or when God repeats the name, Abraham, Abraham, there's a challenge about to come, right? Something, something is going to be, something new is going to enter your life. You are anxious and troubled about many things. We're anxious. We're lacking hope. We're lacking the peace that comes from hope. You're troubled, and troubled doesn't just mean like you've got indigestion. Again, it's something bigger. It, the word comes from to throw into into uh, commotion, to start a riot. Those are the some. There's it's a huge upheaval going on in her life because she has no foundation. She hasn't found the, the one foundation. But Jesus identifies her need because it is a need. She needs to know that yes, you are cared for. Yes, there is meaning to your life. Yes, you have a future that's secure. She needs that. And, and I, I just love Father Lewis last night identifying that we all have needs and it's we know who to express those needs to. She hadn't quite gotten around to that, but Jesus takes the initiative. You have a need. And he said, there is one thing that is a need. She thinks there's many. That's why she's distracting herself, just because she can't focus on one thing. She's trying all these different things. Maybe this is going to satisfy me. Maybe this is going to bring me fulfillment. Maybe, you know, if I travel, I'll, I'll have a sense of the broader world. Uh, maybe if I get the right job, there'll be some meaning in my life. There's one need. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Jesus is making a big reference here, the chosen portion. That, that word portion is connected to the word an inheritance. It's used in the Old Testament of the inheritances of Israel, described in, in, in Numbers. When God said, cast by lot and apportion the inheritances to the 12 tribes according to the lot. What's the lot? It's the, it's the lottery. What does it express? It expresses that God is choosing for each of the tribes this portion of the land that will not just be, you know, a piece of land, but it's God's tangible hope, God's tangible provision for his people. Because the land means, for one thing, sustenance. As soon as they began to eat from the fruit of the land, the manna ceased. What was manna? Manna was their provision in the wilderness. Now as God is giving them a tangible hope, the land. But it's also about meaning, because the land is uh, their work. They have meaningful work. They, they, they found in way their vocation, how they express uh, their care of the land part of God's plan for them. And it's embedded in relationships. Something that our, our society is so sorely lacking. The inheritance secures our hope. Later on in the scripture, well, actually, when in the original apportioning of the land, there was one tribe that didn't get a portion. You guys all know what that one was? Thank you. See, it's wonderful to preach to folks like you. <laughs> so, because yeah, I, I probably would have, you know, from a parish, I might have heard like, oh, Samaritans? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> no judgment. 
Psalm 16, verse 5. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. It's the inheritance of believers. The Lord is the chosen portion. And that's what Jesus is saying to Martha. Martha, or to, to Martha about Mary. Mary's found the chosen portion, the portion that was chosen for her. When God apportioned the inheritances, God has apportioned for Martha the same hope, the same inheritance, the same portion. That lot that he's apportioned to each one of us who have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is the one that answers the question, am I valued? He paid his, the ultimate price for you. Are you valued? Yes, infinitely valued, beyond price. Does your life have meaning? You're a son, you're a daughter of the king. Yes, your life has meaning. What about my future? What's the future hold? Salvation, guarded in heaven for you. Jesus is the good portion. Jesus is the portion chosen for each and every individual. Each one that is distracting him or herself with countless numbers of activities and still not finding meaning. Where will I find a place where I'm known, where I'm loved, where I'm connected? Jesus' community. We have the great opportunity to touch our tangible hope, Jesus, in the Eucharist. Jesus, our provision, our sustenance, our meaning, and our hope. Leave behind distraction. Give up anxiety and worry. And embrace the tangible hope that is Jesus you too might find meaning, hope, and secure knowledge that you are infinitely valued by that same Jesus.